I would like to talk about a project that our uh, organization, Cystic Fibrosis Europe, is currently prioritizing, which is to enhance the collection of real world data, which is clinical data, patient reported data, and mobile health information outside the context of clinical trials, but in daily life. So I'll first tell you a bit more about who we are. So Cystic Fibrosis Europe, or CFV, is a federation of national CF associations in Europe. So we are an umbrella organization. And 39 European countries are member of CFV. Our aims are to promote and support patient-centered research, to promote the best care from a patient perspective, to represent and defend the interests of people with CF, to inform member organizations and support sharing of best practice, and to provide tailor-made support to members. And it's, it is in that capacity that we believe that CAV has an important role to play as an enabler to spread real-world data capabilities as efficiently as possible. But first, let's take one step back and explain to you why uh, the collection of real-world data has become so uh, important in cystic fibrosis. Um, so CF treatment is gradually making the switch from a, a merely symptomatic uh, treatment to so-called disease-modifying treatments, uh, which means that more and more, more and more people with cystic fibrosis uh, with different mutations are becoming eligible for so-called uh, CFTR modulators, which are small molecules uh, that are able to tackle the disease at its roots, uh, namely the faulty CFTR protein. Um, so these drugs are highly effective but also come uh, at a very high cost. And there's a big discrepancy in access throughout Europe, but also throughout the world um, for, these, for these new drugs. Um, and also other advanced uh, therapeutic medicinal products or ATMPs are coming the CF community's way, such as uh, mRNA, mRNA therapy um, or gene therapy. So people with CF in many countries rely on real world evidence um, to, for instance, demonstrate the effectiveness uh, of innovative treatments for access agreements. Um, and we know that some countries are really leading the way uh, in real world data collection, while there are others that are um, seeking to enhance the collection of real world data. Um, and see if Europe has an important role to play in supporting its member organizations to spread real world data. And capabilities because we are convinced that if patients are in the center of their data collections, um, they will be at the center of their care and also their needs will be better understood by all stakeholders. And that in the end will lead to better access to optimal care for all people um, with CF. So the vision of this project is for enhanced data collection um, carried out through patient reporting and reporting outside of the clinical setting um, meaning that this data will describe um, the patient's health on an everyday basis at their home and not in the CF center, um, and also reflects um, the variables, variables that patients find um, important. Um, in addition to variables that are clinically relevant, relevant um, and it also includes, where possible, the validation of data in a clinical setting meaning where the data collected um, enhances the clinician uh, and patient's partnership and enriches the clinical data uh, sets. So the aim of this project is therefore to really assist uh, member patient organizations uh, for, with the collection of real world data. So enhancing uh, real world data collection has the uh, potential to really support, transform and enhance uh, across a wide range uh, of stakeholders actually, uh, which is a win-win situation both for the people with CF and um, for all the people that are really taking care of them. Um, as you can see, we placed people with CF in the heart, um, in the center, in control of their own data uh, and driving what data is collected. And this will in turn uh, support better care and better decision-making about care. Um, as you can understand, this is quite um, a challenging venture um, as we are and we are carrying out this project in different phases to make it uh, a bit easier. So the first step was to undertake a scoping exercise to gain insight from patient organizations into current data collection methods in place across Europe. Um, and to also get an understanding about the gaps and barriers to undertaking real-world data collection, and also to identify what is already in place uh, and what are the best practices out there. 
We also engaged with stakeholders within the CF community, but also uh, in the larger rare disease area um, and undertook 22 stakeholder interviews with pharmaceutical, medtech and technology companies. Their feedback was overwhelmingly positive, uh, with companies saying that it really makes sense for patients to set the priorities for data collection and that this should be done in a transparent, open way with patients controlling uh, their in phase two, uh, which we hope that can start this month, uh, we will go design the projects with our partners, uh, which are, of course, also our member uh, patient organizations, uh, and try to set up some pilot projects in our members. Uh, and in phase three, we will further roll out the initiative uh, in the coming years. So, Establishing systems to enhance data collection and implement data standards can be very difficult as it requires financial investment, data expertise, but also buy-in from stakeholders such as healthcare professionals and, of course, the patients. To understand which support is needed from us, um, it is imperative to understand the gaps in data collection and dissemination disparity across Europe. And therefore, from March to June 2021, we disseminated an online survey to our 39 members, uh, and we asked about the data uh, collection practices, use of patient-reported outcome measures, and uh, most importantly, what support patient organizations would like to enhance, uh, would like to, to enhance data collection in their country. So uh, in total, 59% of our uh, of our member organizations responded to the online survey, which is 23 out of 39. And we also carried out interviews with member organizations to discuss their ongoing projects um, and examples of best practice and through anecdotal feedback for those who did not feel comfortable um, to fill in the, the online survey. The most important finding uh, with respect to the clinical data was a large variability um, and how data collection is undertaken from country to country. And this was actually also true for the, for the patient reported outcomes. So for clinical data, 40% um, of patient organizations uh, stated that their country did not collect any health measure. 66% of the POs reported that uh, drug names are collected, but only 39% uh, collected information uh, on dosage and 28% captured side effects. And over 33% stated that their country didn't collect any of these details. When it then comes to patient reported outcomes, 50% uh, of POs reported the collection uh, of PROs in their country. 44% did not collect patient reported outcomes in their country. And of those countries uh, who did collect PRO data, 40% provided a structure, uh, structured approach to sharing this data. We then also asked our member organizations to tell us what their perfect scenario would be with respect to, to real world data uh, collection. And the responses really reflected the range of, of positions our member organizations found, uh, found themselves in. So some examples uh, included promoting exchange of good practices, ensuring data can be extrapolated to the European level um, and to organize informative events for member associations. Another PO said, get deeper insights on effects on CFDR modulators. How do they really influence uh, patients' lives, not only uh, psychologically, also physically, and the effect on their participation in society? But then an, a member on the other side of the spectrum said, uh, we do not have any kinds of official registry for CF. Everything is voluntarily from doctor to doctor or clinic to clinic. Our association uh, collects everything in one place. And when someone needs some data, we send what we have, but nothing of that um, is official. So these quotes show really the range of needs from our members, um, and they clearly want to know about best practice. Um, an example of that is the Genia app in Sweden. This app was adapted by a father of a child with CF, uh, Andreas Hager, and we have a short video where Andreas describes how the data is collected for antibiotic treatments and effects. So I hope this will work. Four years ago, patients, providers and researchers in Sweden came together in a coalition to design a system 
for patient reported information on exacerbations and antibiotics. We came to the conclusion that the best stakeholder to collect information about this was the patient and that the information was very important to understand Sorry about that. the benefits and the changes in standards of care uh, when new disease modifying treatments were co coming in. Also, antibiotics was considered one of the biggest burdens of treatment for patients uh, and also clinicians. So this was also an area where everyone felt it made sense to work together. Number one is to make sure that there are feedback loops so that patients reporting and clinicians receiving that information have an instant benefit of that sharing. The second is to work with patient controlled information flows because it helps all the ethical, legal and social implications of information sharing when the patient is in control and can give the necessary consents to the use of the data. And the third, which is a tricky one, but is very important and has been a success factor for us, is to really work on the informatics and the information resources and the design so that the information shared between the different systems, the patient app, the healthcare medical records, the patient registries, and then reporting to the authorities can work seamlessly with the same informatics system. In the future, what we want to do is to roll. So from carrying out a scoping exercise, it is clear that there is a need to establish an efficient reworld data capabilities platform that CID member patient organizations can rely on to always keep them up to date. And it is also clear that there is uh, that it is desirable to offer support for CIV members, member patient organizations who want to set up their own reworld data collection system. Lastly, an emerging team is to ensure that whatever um, is put into place is able to also connect with an EU level um, ecosystem to, to really record these uh, reworld data. Um, and therefore, uh, phase two of the project will be formed uh, out of three project work streams, which will take place simultaneously. A work stream one will be, will be to design how best practices are shared, how will countries that start from scratch be helped, and what capabili capabilities and resources are needed. Then in work, work stream two, we enable to create an open innovation forum, bringing together CF stakeholders and also industry partners. Um, and we foresee that uh, our member organizations will be able to um, connect their pilot uh, projects to that uh, innovation forum. And then work stream three will look into how we can all interconnect us on an EU level um, so that we are all working uh, following the same approach. So if I would have to um, compare our ecosystem with, with a visual, uh, I, would, uh, I would choose a Ferris wheel. So the Ferris wheel is then um, the ecosystem that is set up by CF Europe with the patients really in the heart. And our members will be able to, to hang their baskets on the Ferris wheel uh, of the ecosystem, um, really, yeah, benefiting from, from what we have set up uh, and also sharing their learnings and their best practice with us, um, all interconnecting it on a European level. So thank you for listening. Uh, I'll be happy to re respond to your questions later on. And if you would like to talk to us or share, uh, share your learnings, you can always contact Claire Francis, our project manager. Thank you very much.